I quit. I finally quit. I quit. I finally quit. I no longer have to ride this thing anymore. Now, I'm hoping by the end of this, you guys are going to learn a thing or two about a robot lawnmower because this isn't some sponsor about one, but this video is sponsored by Squarespace. But first, let's back up a little bit. If you go onto Amazon and type in robot lawnmower, there's quite a lot on here and they're fairly cheap. But don't be mistaken. Robot lawnmowers, unlike the recent craze of robot hoovers that have taken off, can't rely on a solid internal floor and wall to use a service like LiDAR. The thing is, garden terrains differ in size, layout, and plant diversity. Edges, ornaments, and different types of terrain all play a factor. All that's to say, it's not a one-size-fits-all job, this, unless you've got a really, really simple garden. The thing is, annoyingly, my garden is tricky. I've got both apple, pear, and plum trees in here. They're in the middle of the lawn, and as you can see, some of them come out at really obscure angles, not to mention all the droppings that they leave all over the lawn. And the thing is, a lot of these robot mowers use GPS for their location. The problem is, as soon as you've got a little bit of tree cover, that GPS becomes really unreliable, and nobody wants an unreliable robot. A really popular robot mower and brand is the company EcoFlow. They make this robot mower, but you have to stick this really long pole in the ground, and this is simply just to boost the GPS signal due to foliage issues. And if the device is getting stuck due to being stuck on leaves or apples or pears or plums or trees coming out the ground, or God forbid it has a rubbish GPS signal and has to pause itself, that is going to be more annoying, and I'd rather just get the big mower out and get the job done. So, Mower Magic paid me a visit about a month ago and noted down all of these things that personally I hadn't even thought about. About the GPS, about the trees, about the apples, and went back and recommended me the Ambrosio 20 Elite Robot Mower. And it has a few features specific to my garden. It's now outside and it's been cutting the grass for a couple of weeks, so we can go and take a look. One of these main features that's specific for my garden is that this robot uses what's called a perimeter wire, which gets laid all the way around the edge of the garden. This ensures that the robot will not leave the working area, and if you've got really specific things like I do, trees coming out at odd angles, the perimeter wire can also go around these to make sure that the robot goes nowhere near these trees so it doesn't get stuck underneath them. Again, mitigating any problems or annoyances that could come up with a robot mower. That perimeter wire is laid all the way around the edge of the garden. You can't even see it anymore after two weeks, and it ends up at this base station. Obviously, it needs a power cable, so this just goes off into the shed and plugs into a three-pin plug. Right, so let's have a look at the robot mower itself. Bear in mind, this has been in the garden for about two and a half, three weeks now, and it has definitely picked up its fair share of dirt and apple mulch and everything else that lives in a garden. Obviously, it does have an app, but it doesn't really need it. You need the app for setup, but you can just control this entire thing from the top of this. Obviously, if there's emergency, you've got a big red stop button. Now, this is actually a rain sensor. So if water lands between these two metal posts, this little device knows that the ground is wet, therefore will not go on its jollies cutting the grass. You've got obviously a start and pause button, an auto button, so it goes on its own, on its schedule, on and off, and then you can send it for home. Underneath, you can see this massive, massive sharp blade, and you can also raise and lower the deck height with a special little tool that they give you. You've actually got two brushless motors at the back, and the way this robot moves around is if it wants to turn left or right, it just puts more power to one of the rear motors so it can make that turn. It is a really simple device that cuts grass. But the question is, how well does it cut it? So once the robot was all installed and Mower Magic left, they were awesome, by the way. I'm going to put links to them in the description. I have to say, for a couple of weeks, I was slightly disappointed because you can't really see anything happening. It takes a couple of weeks for then the grass to be cut and for you to actually realize, hang on a minute, I've not cut the grass in a couple of weeks and the back lawn looks like a complete carpet. I mean, look at it. I don't know if the camera is gonna do this any justice at all, but this is a far finer and lower cut 
than I would ever be able to get with my actual ride-on mower. And it goes further than that. Because the deck of the ride-on mower is so large and this back lawn has quite a lot of undulations, I'd find that the ride-on would leave certain parts of the lawn that were lower not as cut. But because the robot is so small and nimble, it can get into these little crevices and the whole lawn is exactly the same level. Now, let's talk about that blade on the back of it because that's a serious piece of kit. Now, a couple of days ago, I picked about 100 of those things up out the garden and they are still dropping again. The reason that blade is so important is because it's a heavy duty blade and that blade will actually mulch these apples. And that is something that you don't usually find on your standard run of the mill robot lawnmower. They usually just use a spinning disc with a load of little razor blades on them to cut the grass. Whereas this is a solid bit of kit. So you can see here, instead of just riding on and getting stuck, on said apple, it has just completely chopped it up. At the start of this year, I actually spent a good three or four days with my best friend mulching this lawn and laying brand new seed. And I'm really happy with it. One thing I used to like doing with my mower is lines in the lawn. And I know a load of people absolutely love lines on their lawn. Unfortunately, that's a downfall of a robot mower. Yes, there is some that can do lines. This robot doesn't do lines. I noticed that the mower seemed to pick a spot and then simply just do circles as if it didn't really know what it was doing. Turns out the robot mower knows exactly what it's doing and they call this the wildfire cut, like it's a wildfire spreading out. So it actually uses GPS to sort of pick a two by two square area of the garden that it hasn't cut recently. It will then go to that area and start its circular wildfire cut. And then it uses, like I said, the GPS to figure out where it's been and where it hasn't to make sure that the entire grass ends up being cut over the period of a couple days. Yes, I've had issues. Yes, it's got stuck on massive, massive apples. There is no way of getting around that. But I do have to say that with the amount of annoyances that I have in this garden, what with all the trees and all of the foliage and fruit falling down, I am very, very impressed. And still to this day, it has now been exactly one month and three days since I have cut the lawn with this ride on. And it looks absolutely fantastic. In fact, I can show you how good this thing is. I actually asked the guys to run the perimeter wire just slightly inside for your guys' demonstrational purposes only. And as you can see, this bit hasn't been cut and it is this tall. But one thing I'm happy about is that I've learned loads. Seeing all of this and being able to relay that to you, I'm hoping that you've learned something and this stuff isn't as easy as they make it out to be on product blurbs. The other thing I was slightly concerned about is I like to bag my grass and put it somewhere else. Whereas this just cuts it and leaves it on the ground. They described them as tea leaves to me, so it cuts up the grass that much. They're as little tea leaves. If I try to pick up some grass off the floor, I mean, I can find little bits here and there, but it's a non-issue and I thought it would be a big issue, complete non-issue. Now the robot does come with an app, but to be honest, it's fairly limited and you barely ever use it, mainly only to set the schedules. The app's really good for alerting you if the robot gets stuck because it actually supplies you with a GPS location of where the robot is stuck, which could be helpful if you've got a large garden. The robot has Bluetooth and GSM built into it, but you can only access all the features when you've got a Bluetooth connection. Right, so let's talk cost because it's quite important. And I get a lot of people that are wanting to deploy something like this might not even be bothered about the cost. They might just want the time saving. We'll try and go through it all together. So this on Moa Magic's website costs around one and a half thousand pounds. For a little bit of context, a basic ride on mower like what I've got in the garden, they start from about one and a half thousand pounds as well and can easily rise up to double that, talking three and a half to four thousand pounds. And that's not even taking into consideration the things like fuel, maintenance, and the time that you'll actually have to set aside to cut your lawn. 
Another scenario would be, let's say you're paying a gardener 20 pound a week to come round and cut your lawn. This costing one and a half thousand pounds, it would take you just under one and a half years to recoup all of your cash you would have spent on the gardener on the upfront cost of one of these. So it's obviously a given that they save you a lot of time, but over time they also will eventually end up saving you money and hassle on maintenance and repairs because mowers always need maintenance and repairs. Now, does this robot make my garden completely maintenance free? No, not in the slightest. It cuts the working area and that's it. As I've already shown you with the edges of the garden, this does have an option to go around and cut the edges, but there is still bits of my garden that I do have to go out and tend to manually with a strimmer. And that's absolutely fine because I'd have to do that anyway as to whether I'm using a robot or cutting the lawn with a lawn mower and strimming only takes me around 10 minutes every couple of weeks. Another cool thing to mention is this. A lot of you will have noticed Atlas, my dog, in the back of this video, and he loves to be in the garden. It's his favorite place. And I would hate for this thing to run over his tail and God forbid, chop it off. This is a little thing that you can put round his collar or on his collar, and it will make sure that this robot won't go anywhere near the dog. So if you have pets and you're worried about it, I wanted to let you know that this is an option. But with that being said, guys, I hope you've learned something in this video about these robot mowers, and it's time to thank today's video sponsor. Squarespace. Have you ever wondered about designing or creating your own website, whether it's for your personal stuff or for a business, but stopped yourself because you've thought, yeah, that's out of my depth, it's going to be hard to do. Not on Squarespace. You choose from one of the thousands of pre-made professionally designed templates and then you use that as a base. You can then upload your own pictures, text, animations to that and make it yours and make it custom. You can have a really professional website up and running in no less than half an hour. And they've also got expert features on there like SEO and code injection. SEO is so you can see what your website's gonna appear like to potential buyers or customers on search engines like Google. And code injection is what it is. You can inject code if you're an advanced user and do cool things on your website. So if you would like to save yourself 10% off your first Squarespace purchase or domain, the www.bit, simply go to squarespace.com forward slash techflow or just use code techflow at checkout. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thanks to Mo and Magic for coming out and teaching me loads so then I can teach you guys. My name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>